You ready? Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here today with. Ba I'm sorry. You know what? In the meantime, get on the same level. Okay. 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 Now, are you CMO for Ericsson North America or for? No. Global. Global. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Okay. Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here today with Arun Bikshesvaran. He is Global CMO for Ericsson. Arun, thank you so much for making the time today. Happy to be here. We are excited about your new small cell announcement, and I'd like to get here in your own words about the advantages of the integration with the Ericsson Macro Network. Absolutely. So the product that we've announced is a 6402. Uh, it's an indoor cell that has 3G technology, LTE, and Wi-Fi. Uh, very compact, about the size of a tablet, 2.8 liters. It's got four 250 milliwatt radios. And the advantage that you get is that this can be very nicely coordinated with the macro network that exists out there. And that, as we have talked about before, provides for fantastic capacity gains and reduction of interference in the overall system. So when you have your indoor network talking to your macro network, uh, the, the advantages that you get in terms of the macro network not having to pay attention to the indoor mobile, because the indoor network, its counterpart, the indoor network is taking care of it, provides for very good efficiency on the micro network, at the same time guaranteeing a great user experience for the person using the phone inside, inside an environment, inside a building, et cetera, where the indoor network is there. So that is the advantage that we see in terms of a coordinated network, and that is why we have built our 6402 to be a very, very good complement to what exists on the micro network, and filling the space between the dot radio and the macro network. Okay, I do want to go back and talk a little bit more about the dot radio, but first, what if the macro network is not Ericsson equipment? So if the macro network is not uh, Ericsson equipment, of course, the 6402 is standards compliant. So depending on the technology, air interface technology that you use and the network combination that exists, it is possible to deploy it in a multi-vendor situation. It, just, it really comes down to which network technology you're using on the macro and what you want to use the 6402 for. But if the, you have to remember, when you do that, then you're really uh, not taking full advantage of everything that this product can do because it is capable of 3G, 4G, and Wi-Fi. And it, it can move the traffic between those in real time, right? Absolutely. So that is all network controlled. So if you have a, a device that is capable of 3G, 4G, and of course Wi-Fi, depending on network logic, you can steer the mobile between different um, air interfaces, if you would just call them, based on a variety of parameters, whether it is signal strength or the type of application that you're using, et cetera. And that is where the network-based logic starts to come into play. Okay, great. And this is a successor to the Radio Dot that you introduced last year, right? It is not a successor. So the Radio Dot has its own space in terms of very large venues where you have multiple Radio Dots talking to an indoor radio unit. What we have seen is that there is a, there is a gap where the macro network um, and the Radio Dot had their place. And we, we have estimated there are approximately 10 million buildings that can be served with a product like this, where it is not a huge campus where you would have multiple radio dots deployed, but it would be large enough where one 6402 can cover that entire building. And that is where this product is positioned. It is between radio dot system and the macro network. Okay, and how many users can it support? Uh, so do you know exactly? Um, I think, I mean, I it think depends on the technology, it's, uh, it's got multiple users, so. Yeah, I think they yeah. said 128 LTE yeah. users. No, I, think, I think it depends on the technology, so. And, and you have had a follow-up question on people. Oh, okay, I'll go. Do you have that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think it's 128 on uh, I think they said 128 28, LTE. and was it, um, in the case that you gave, and you use it in your article? Mm -hmm. Cause, um, and then they said 64 on WC. I mean, they didn't say how many, if they were, if it was doing both. 128 classes. connected users on LTE and 64 on WCDMA. Right, and they said that's not when it, when it wasn't in multi-mode? No, said? that's correct. Okay. It's not that you can add those two numbers. They have to be right. Okay. distinct. OK, and then. Uh, so you do have to do some editing now. Well, not as well. Let me start over. <laughs> we still got a couple minutes. But do we want to start over? 
You don't need to start over. Oh, you, um, want to, you want to start over? Is that going to be easiest for you? And speak just a little bit. Okay, okay. slow. No, you know what I'll do? I'll just do, I'll post two videos with you. I'll just finish the first one. I'll find a, a nice out point, okay. and then I'll post a second one. Okay. I'll do that. That's easier. Okay, so we'll start off talking about um, the number of supported users and. Um, I think that it would be interesting to understand also the um, deployment-wise how it's doing. You were explaining to me how the, the cabling with the radio dot, and I think that people might be interested in that. So sure. we'll start off Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. okay. We're good? Yeah, everybody looks And can you remind me the name? I'll start off saying the name of the small cell. Can you remind me? RS6802? RBS6402. RBS6402. Okay. Welcome back to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and we're here with Arun Bikshes Varun. He is, no, say it again. Bikshes Varun. That is really good. Okay. <laughs> and it's the RSB6402. RBS, radio base radio station. Radio base station. Well, that would radio make sense. Okay, station. radio base station. Welcome back to RCR Wireless News. We're here with Arun Bikshesvaran. He is global CMO for Ericsson, and we're talking about the RBS 6402, Ericsson's new small cell introduced this week at CTIA 2014. Arun, you were telling us about the number of concurrent supported users in LTE. Can we get back to that? Absolutely. So 128 simultaneous users on LTE, 64 on HSPA mode. So it is a very robust system in terms of handling capacity in an indoor environment. Now, how does that compare to how many radio dot can support? So the radio dot is really dependent on the number of different radio heads that you can and the you know, geography that you can cover and the indoor radio unit. So it is not really an apple to apple comparison. This is a self-contained node that has everything that you need. The radio dot is an extensible system, so you can deploy multiple radio heads uh, in that configuration. So it's uh, slightly different in terms of how they are deployed. Okay, great. And can you talk a little bit about that deployment and um, the steps that, that are eliminated here that people would take for deploying the radio dot with the cables? Absolutely. So in a radio dot system, what you would do is you would put an indoor radio unit in a telco closet in a closet somewhere, and that indoor radio unit is then connecting via Ethernet cable to multiple dot radios that you would deploy you know, inside a building. Uh, so th those tend to be point-to-point -point connections that run from the IRU to the remote radio heads. Uh, or the dot radios. In the case of 6402, all you need is one Ethernet cable, and it supplies power and backhaul. And you're up and running in 10 minutes because as soon as you plug in the cable, the 6402 does a self-discovery and talks back to the macro network and all the infrastructure components there, configures itself, and it's up and running in 10 minutes. So it is a completely different unit because it is all self-contained, and there is not many distributed components. Uh, so it requires just one Ethernet cable that goes into the base station. All right. And can you give us a little bit of color about your conversations with service providers that led to, to this as the next step in your small cell strategy? Absolutely. So what we started to figure out was that when um, the buildings were of a certain size, about 50,000 square feet, then at that level, uh, the, the economics of deploying uh, a radio dot solution versus a macro solution uh, was really starting to get stretched a little bit. They said, couldn't we have a product? Because this, this it takes quite a bit of trouble, let us say, uh, for this 50,000 square feet building to go in and deploy multiple radio heads, et cetera. Because it is possible to just cover that with one unit if you had a unit like that. And ideally, we would like multiple technologies in that unit. And uh, that, that kind of a product was very doable from our uh, background where we were coming from. Uh, because we had good uh, technology development for LTE and we were able to create a multi-mode base station and that is why we chose to do this thing because for that kind of a size of building and it presents enough of a market opportunity there are some 10 million buildings around the world uh, so it's a sizable market opportunity out there we had the technology that was allowing us to quickly you know package this and bring this to market uh, and it is a market leading product it's the size of a tablet like what we've talked about before four 250 milliwatt radios two point liters in size you know all three technologies carrier aggregation it's really a state-of-the-art product all right great and give us a little bit more information please about the software configurability yeah the software configurability is uh, is really plug and play so you could ship this uh, node literally from a warehouse to the building where you want to install it. A technician goes out there, 
you know, mounts it wherever you need to mount it and plugs in the Ethernet cable. And this base station is then able to talk back to the O&M system, which can then recognize where the base station is located based on, you know, geo coordinates, etc., and sends out the configuration information uh, as to, you know, what frequencies it should use and what power levels and everything. So it's really plug and play from that perspective. And uh, in our tests, it can be up and running in as little as 10 minutes. That's fast. So you have explained how it integrates seamlessly with the macro network, and in some cases that can even be another vendor's macro network if it's LTE. But what about with Wi-Fi? A lot of these um, commercial buildings are going to have a lot of Wi-Fi access points already and need to integrate with those. Can you give a little bit of an idea on how that will work? Well, it is possible to do it, but really uh, if this base station is capable of doing Wi-Fi, the, the opportunity or uh, the chance that you will have another Wi-Fi system uh, running in parallel doesn't really make a whole lot of um, you know, sense from an end user perspective or from a maintainability perspective. So more than likely what you would probably do is to deploy the system and you know, turn down that other Wi-Fi system. That's really what makes most sense. However, if you need for it to coexist, then of course you can choose different bands on which that Wi-Fi system is working, depending on how old or new it is. You can make our product work on a different band uh, because it supports multiple bands, of course. So that is one way to make it coexistence. But really, since this product is so powerful, I would imagine that all Wi-Fi would go through this. Okay, great. Arun Bikshesvarun, Global CMO at Ericsson. Thank you very much for joining us here at CTIA. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Red button still on? <laughs> yeah, it's still on. It's still okay. Recording. So, and if there's anything else, you know, that you want to let us know about, we can just have that conversation quickly. And you know, it's recording, so I have it. I think we're going to. Yeah. Um, Erickson's overall presence here, and and um, yeah. So I think you know our overall presence is sort of uh, really weak here. Uh, we have talked about our vision of the network society. So what we are displaying here and we are engaging in multiple conversations on is the overall industry transformation that's happening and our role in this. So for example, tomorrow we will be part of the Connected Car keynote uh, with Ralph uh, De La Vega and Glenn Lurie. And we have been part of AT&T's Connected Drive program. Uh, we have also launched multiple products uh, outside of North America. For example, we have an ongoing partnership with Volvo on their Connected Car uh, initiatives. So the XC90, which was launched by Volvo just a couple of weeks ago, is powered by you know, our platform. And uh, we see more interest coming out of this from other parts of the world as well. So that is one example of an industry transformation, the automotive industry that we are part of. Another one, and if you haven't had a chance, you should watch this on the show floor that we have, is our collabor collaboration with Philips, right. where we have created a very compact site uh, that also doubles as a lamp pole. If you talk to the Philips guys, they will say that it is a lamp pole that doubles as a site. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Jeff told me about this. It's, it's yeah. one product that can be used to build smart cities in a very nice way, right? Because you've got the advantage of LED lighting that can go to the cities, cut energy costs, etc. The LED lights can also serve another purpose, which is maybe for emergency purposes, you can change the color on that. Or during the holiday season, you can have it flash multiple <laughs> colors, right? So you suddenly start to create a different kind of an environment. What? Because of using this site, we also get excellent coverage for pedestrian traffic and foot traffic inside the city. So you start to serve multiple purposes when you can go in and make a transformation at a city level using something like that. So that is one example of how cross-industry collaboration is coming in. Yeah. And it is a lighting industry bringing in the latest technology. Uh, us coming in with the infrastructure for the next generation in terms of digital communications. And the city participating in this environment to create a much more livable environment for the urban population. So the, the kind of transformation that we're working with is just fascinating, and these are just two examples of what we're doing here. And where did you say the lamppost is? The lamppost is just out here, you know, uh, so if you, when you walk down here, you'll be able to see. Oh, great. Maybe I'll get a shot of it. Yeah, you can yeah. get a shot of it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Anything else you want to highlight? I think that's it. Yeah, I do too. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's very nice. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks a lot. No problem. So I'd like to take you down there if you want to get some cover.